Siri. How long ago was February 16, 2012? It was 12 years ago. You're lying. All right, Coolie Companions. Today, I'm going to share with you guys some of my journal entries. It's a private journal that I started back in 2012. I have well over 200 plus posts and counting because I still use this online journal for my documentation when I'm not doing YouTube videos. And that's a lot of entries to go through and I will not be going through that many in this one video. My idea was to do three helpful ones. Um, so not all of the blog posts are helpful because some of them are just my toxic thoughts and cringe moments. And maybe I'll share some of those concerning my natural hair, but I will take out the ones that are actually very helpful. Back in 2013, so just about a year after I started this blog, I grew my hair the longest it had ever been. And it was a milestone for me. Granted, it wasn't to my bra strap, but it was past the length that it had been most of my life. And so, obviously I was doing something right. And so I wanted to go back and look at what was I doing and maybe perhaps glean from my 12 years younger self and see what we can find out and discover together. So February, 2012, I have this one post called Hair Re New Regimen. And at the time I was using a shampoo, Miss Jessie Curl's Creme de la Creme. I don't even remember how well it worked, but girl, that Herbal Essence Hello Hydration was bay, And I don't know why Herbal Essence got rid of the long-term relationship conditioner. It was the perfect, perfect benefit though. You couldn't get any better than that for protein. I was also using my favorite leave-in conditioner, Kinky Curly Knot Today. I used that though in a different recipe. So I'll get to that in a second. And then I had a protein treatment that I never used. It was from Cantu Shea Butter and Hot Six Oil, never used it. <laughs> um, I just took a nice fancy picture and that was pretty much the last that I used of most of those products. Here is an entry from April 20, the 22nd of 2012. And I had a hair regimen acronym, DCMS. Detangle, conditioning, moisturizing, and styling. So I wash my hair once a week and I moisturize my hair every three days. For detangling, when I take out my protective style, I said protect style. <laughs> I was in college at the time. I will pre-poo my hair with conditioner and spray it with water and use my fingers first to detangle my hair. I kinda still do that. I'll step in the shower and wash my hair, shampooing once or twice, making sure to get the shampoo down in my scalp the most, but down the hair shaft as well. Apparently, I was also using the Shea Moisture Raw Shampoo, which I loved that one. I think that's the Shea Butter one. It's the orange one, the one they first came out with. It smelled amazing. Conditioner. I did a protein conditioning, so I applied my long-term relationship, and I said once my hair gets longer, I'll section my hair into four parts. I can do four parts now. And the moisturizing conditioner, I did afterwards, and then I deep conditioned? Oh my God, so I proteined moisture and then deep conditioned. That may be a lot for some people, maybe kind of excessive, but I don't know, maybe there's something to that because my hair definitely was in good condition around this time. Moisturizing, I said that after I get out the shower, I'll apply the leave-in conditioner, Kim A Tubes recipe, on each twist, wringing out water before I apply. And then styling. If I'm going to wear a hairstyle that requires braiding or length in the morning, I'll stretch my hair by braiding each section, the same detangled condition moisturize and eight sections. Also keep it in those same sections, that's pretty smart. Or if I do lobe manipulation, I'll wear an expressive style. I believe that's what Kim A Tube had coined that term expressive style where it wasn't protective and i said i'll place my hair in either bantu knots or twists i will stretch if i'm going to straighten i'll do a twist out bantu knot out curly fro twists rods or wearing my hair straight really <laughs> okay and then miscellaneous if i'm going to use heat i'll use grapeseed oil before blow drying and flat ironing that actually worked i never ever suffered heat damage at any point in my natural hair career or history, career, until I stopped using grapeseed oil, silicone based conditioners and heat protectants. So I do remember this one time I he damaged my hair, but that was because I didn't use these protective um, precautions. I do have the Kim A Tube recipe that she had at the time. It was two tablespoons of Kinky Curly, not today, 
two tablespoons of whole leaf aloe vera juice, two teaspoons of jojoba oil, and two teaspoons of castor oil. I also have the pH strips because that's what she would do. She really was someone that I modeled my practices after at that time because she was so such a visible voice in the natural hair community when it came to foundation, structure, and logic. She had tested her hair all these years and it worked, so I basically trusted whatever she said. So I made sure to do a pH test and sure enough, it came up to 4.5 or 4.0 and that's kind of the range you want for your leave-in conditioner because it seals the cuticles. Okay, here's one from April 29th called Hand Syndrome. Stop touching my hair. I have this terrible habit of touching my hair and feeling on the ends after I either moisturized or wash. I do it for many reasons. To see if it's dry, to feel the ends, I'm bored and not used to it being out. If I'm not in public, I never ignore my hair, but in public places, I forget it's there. And I realize that I'm not the only one who does this. A host of women do this with their hair all the time. And of all races, LOL. <laughs> So in order to help myself with this hand touch syndrome, I do the following. Place a satin bonnet on my head. Ugh, I need more ideas. <laughs> wow, okay. Here's one from April Still. 10 bad things for natural hair. Natural hair, and I'm talking about the African American natural hair because our kinks and coils are so fragile and vulnerable to everyday things that our other races of sisters don't have to worry about too much but these 10 bad things could also apply to anybody's hair type and texture one too much heat i've suffered from flat ironing a portion of my natural hair without preparing it efficiently and now the ends are permanently and irreversibly damaged Sus face always use a heat protectant and let it dry completely before using your hot tool also make sure the temperature is at least 300 or less number two bleaching I've never bleached or dyed my natural hair, but bleaching is another form of relaxing. It's a chemical process and strips the mess out of your hair's strength. The good side though is natural hair can take a lot of bleaching, but the trade-off is to do frequent and regular deep conditioning if you want to keep your hair. <laughs> I knew a little something back then. Three, relaxers and perms. As a girl who dealt with 70% of my life going back and forth with relaxers, I know that this is like an overkill if you don't take care of your chemically processed natural hair. Just like bleaching, you will have to give your relaxed hair a little more attention than you would normally. Relaxers are permanent. Nothing will ever make your hair revert back. That also includes permanently damage from heat. Number four, using the wrong products. As a natural now, I purchased the book, The Science of Black Hair by Audrey Sivasuthi. I forgot her last name, sorry. She lists a lot of products that are good for natural hair, but also skip the drugstore stuff with the harsh ingredients and stuff and buy your hair items and products from a health food store like Whole Foods, Trader Joe's, or your local health store. Maybe, but I don't adhere to that at all now. Like my leave-in conditioner and conditioner that I use was about seven bucks and I got it at Walmart. So I definitely feel like I was being an elitist here. All right, number five, shampooing too often or not enough. If you shampoo too much, you strip your hair of its natural oils causing breakage and dryness. If you shampoo once a week like me, make sure you choose organic or natural shampoos that doesn't have any harsh chemicals. If you don't shampoo enough, dirt and oils will build up on your scalp preventing your hair from growing. If you work out a lot like me, it's good to do co-washes like every three days of working out. I co-wash on Wednesdays and Saturdays. I was co-washing and wash on Sunday. Highly doubt that. Um, the good thing about is that it's not stripping of your hair like shampooing. Number six, pulling your hair too tight. My edges have suffered from this bad habit. A hairstyle shouldn't hurt. And if it does, something's wrong. Number seven, over processing. Your hair will fall off the very same day of the relaxer if not done properly. Visit a stylist to dye or relax your hair for you. Also try weaves and wigs to stretch in between relaxers. This will make your hair stronger and ready for the next touch up. Number eight, not moisturizing. Combs only see my hair once a week and that's on wash days. I do not brush my edges. I smooth them with my palm. Something else I learned from Kimmy too. I never brush my hair with those bristle brushes. Too much manipulation will cause your hair to break, especially your weaker ends. 
And finally, number 10, not trimming. I know it took you forever to get that one inch of growth, girl, but let's face it, it's weathered. Split end and dry. If you don't cut it off, it will prevent your follicle from producing more growth. A lot of naturals make the mistake of not trimming. Not saying you have to trim every time you wash your hair, but I trim every three to six months to my liking if I see that my ends are a little rough edge and has split ends. Trimming is not such a big deal for naturally curly hair people, but if your hair is straight, it's best to keep your ends nice and clean. I don't wanna overload you guys too much, so we're gonna try this first time episode, and if you guys are interested in seeing more journal entries from the before times, let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for tuning in today's video, and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. Bye.